I hate fading that out, man. But it's all good because we're going to fade in the word of God. Oh, yeah. Y'all, I am hoping, I'm praying, and I hope you're praying too, that, uh, you know, the sledging will resume. Uh, it's some, some promising stuff is happening, y'all. So, uh, you know, just keep us in prayer, man, that 20-pound uh, sledge will be able to get back to stage. Like I said, the album, I've, I've told y'all the, uh, the album is done. The music is done. Just haven't found the right singer uh, to, uh, you know, come in and finish up the vocals. But that might be being rectified. And uh, so I'm really excited about that. So, you know, keep uh, keep drilling in prayers, y'all, so we can, uh, so, you know, 20-pound sledge can get back out there and, and handle that and get back out there and rock the gospel. Get back to the business of rock, rocking the gospel. You know what I'm saying? Amen. Um, so, now also, if you guys are tuning in, man, I hate turning that off, man. I want to bring that groove back. But no, <laughs> I'm playing. I'm playing. We've got the word of God coming. The real jam. The headliner. Yeah. The headliner is about to play. 20-pound <laughs> sledge is just the opening act. And, uh, and uh, the, the word of God is, is, is going to take the stage right about now. So let's get that mosh pit going. Uh <laughs> And if you're showing up, y'all, um, let's see. Hit you see that tweet button? I hope you can. Uh, if you refresh page and you got the stream coming through, rock that tweet button, y'all, and uh, and rock that Facebook button, and uh, tag your friends. You know, tag tag your buds that you think might want to come in and watch. Um, get them in on it, and uh, you know, because that's that's how, how that's how my stuff is gonna get out there. You know, you know Facebook ain't gonna share my stuff. Twitter ain't gonna share my stuff. It takes you. So, you know, as, as you guys are coming in, uh, and I hope to see you guys in the comment feed. It's face, Facebook comment feed, so which means you don't have to sign in or nothing. You guys are probably already on Facebook and stuff like that. You don't have to sign in or anything. Just go ahead and start, you know, uh, you know, coming on, come on in. Say hi. You know, let a brother know that you're there. <laughs> um, and uh, like I said, hit that, twi uh, that, uh, that uh, Twitter button. Hit that Facebook button. Share it. You know, tag some friends. You know, let them know that uh, it's coming in. You know, chances are Facebook ain't going to let your friends see it. Uh, if you just post it, because if, if, if it has to do with me, Facebook's not gonna it's not gonna show it in the feed. Even if you share it, like I share it, Facebook hardly don't want anybody that's associated with me to, uh, to see it. And if you share it, it's gonna be the same thing. You may actually have to just directly tag people that you think might want to show up and hang out, you know, and get in on the conversation, get in on the study. Uh, so hope y'all will do that. Uh, so uh, and if you guys may have noticed, I put up uh, a disclaimer uh, in the uh, <laughs> in the post. That uh, yeah, it's like you know, content warning. You know, if uh, if you're if you're uh, one of them godless heathens, you might burst into flames uh, listening to uh, you know, in the light of the word of God. So I don't want y'all to burst in flames. Yeah. <laughs> so just a warning to you, unless you're ready to receive truth, you know, uh, uh, you, you might you might want to take a little heads up and say, hey, Lord, you know, uh, I've been thinking about this a little while. I might want your protection as I hear your truth. Yeah, that's a good step to make. But now, aside from that, y'all. Um, you know, we're going to be touching on, uh, some, some, you know, content that, you know, might, might delve into, uh, 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 a bit of a sexual issue, not, not sexual per se, but, you know, it has to do with, uh, uh, gender specific things. <laughs> and, uh, so just, you know, for parents, you know, uh, and I, I appreciate, uh, that, uh, you know, as you're, as you're raising your children up in the Lord, uh, you know, that, that you invite me to uh to uh impart my studies you know as we study together uh to share with your kids so you know to help it make sense and make you know the, the word of god uh more um uh understandable uh more graspable digestible uh, how they can uh, uh apply it because the bible is not some archaic book it applies to today Amen. you know we want that practical application of scripture we want and kids be like well why does the bible say this and why does it say that and if, they're, if they're not grounded you know, uh, they can go uh, uh, get a little bit older and start thinking that they too grown for the Bible and, and put it on level with like Santa Claus or something and be like, hey, I, I had an outgrown the Bible and, and you know, not and not see the difference between the two. So, uh, you know, I thank you all for, you know, who, uh, you know, invite me and welcome me to, uh, you know, share my studies, uh, even, you know, with your family. Uh, you know, that's a real blessing to me. So um, and so I take the responsibility of saying, hey, heads up, you know, in this chapter, you know, maybe he's touching on some things that, you uh, uh, you know me, I ain't going to get too far out there. You know, it's, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, I ain't going to do that. Uh, you know, I'll respect, you know, uh, the, 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 young, the youngins in your family. But, you know, this is just the word of God. And these are the, and these are the things that, that people may take out of it. 
So, uh, you know, we'll, you know, just to give you a heads up before we uh, before we get there. Uh, that being said, let's go ahead and jump into Genesis 24. Let's trip out on the mind blowing word of God. All right. Let's see what we got. All right. Now, Abraham was old. <laughs> he was old. All right. Advanced in years. And Adonai blessed Abraham in everything. When Abraham said to his servant, the oldest of his household who managed everything that belonged to him. Now put your hand under my thigh. Excuse me. I'm, so, I'm sorry, Abraham. What do you, you want me to do? <laughs> can, can I just get back out again? Keep on. Master, can I just keep on out there and keep picking that cotton? Can, you know, I'm, I'm okay with that. You just want me out there picking that cotton, Master. I'll be happy to do that. I don't know why you want you to put my hand on your thigh and everything, but you know. <laughs> Actually, we, this, it wasn't that kind of slavery, y'all. This was, this was more of an employee. It's, you, know, uh, you know, this wasn't for, forced servitude. You know, this was like, you know, either indentured servants or bond servants, uh, 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 spoils of war, things like that. Not the kind of forced slavery that God has, that God sanctions for people to be put to death over. Right. Okay, so let's once again, I'm going to keep driving this because people keep trying to say that the Bible condones slavery. It does not. Okay, bond servants, you know, if you got a, a debt to pay off, indentured servitude, spoils of war. That's a different kind of servitude. Forced slavery, kidnapping a person and selling them into a slave market, punishable by death. Okay, so let's let's keep driving that home for people who keep trying to use uh, uh, slander the Bible and say this pro-slavery. It is not. All right. So where was we at? Um, of the household who managed everything that belonged to him. Now put your hand under my thigh, so that I may make you take an oath by Adonai, the God of heaven and the God of earth. That you will not take a wife for my son from among the daughters of Canaan, of the Canaanites, among them who I am dwelling. On the contrary, to my land and to my relatives, you must go and get a wife for my son Isaac. All right, let's let's uh let's back up. I mean, we done heard the word of God. All right, so like I said, even if I get this stuff wrong, bottom line is you're gonna hear the word of God first. All right, so let's see, let's see, let's see what we get. Let's see what we get. Um, now put your hand under my thigh. All right. Now some speculate, and this is where, okay, this is them head up, this is them heads up. Okay. Uh, 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 for the kiddies. Okay. Now some speculate when it says, when the Hebrew breaks down, when it says, put your hand under my thigh, um, you, you can get a breakdown in the Hebrew that says, put your hand under my loins. Okay. Uh, it, it can even translate as to put your hand up you know, like my upper thigh, like I want you, this is, a, this is very, it's like, look, man, we can, in other words, this is getting very familiar. Yeah. All right. Now I'm just saying, I'm not saying that this is what this means. I'm just saying what the word breaks down to as. Okay. And then when you get into, um, when you get into some, you know, like, um, language scholars and they, and they examine it, like say, for instance, um, uh, like, uh, it'll say, Get your, get you know. I want you to place your hand under my 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 loins, my my testicles. Okay. Um, now, like I said, I'm not saying that this is what this means. I'm just saying that the speculation is out there that this is what this breaks down to as. Um, and it's important that we that we examine you know the, the validity of these things. Um, so now, when he's saying that, because this is this is like a test. He's 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 making a a, a, a solemn vow. He's like he's having his servant make a solemn vow to him. This is like this covenant that he's doing with them. Okay, this is a test, right? It's a test. This is a test of his faith, which incidentally is where we you know we is drawn from the word testicles, right? Testes, validation. So when you talk about a man's testicles you're talking about the, the, the validation of the virility of his manhood the test of his manhood the, the validation of that it's like even when a child is born what are you looking for you look at the validation of the genitalia so the test of it's a if the child is a boy or a girl is going to be in what you see like the first thing you see externally it's going to be you're going to see uh um testicles you know they dropped and stuff you know and so on and so forth okay so there's this test like where we get testimony testify, testament, the test, right, from the testicles. So is there validity 
to the speculation that when it says, because as the Hebrew does break down to the loins. Now, I'm not saying I agree with this. I'm just saying let's examine the speculation of the language. Okay, this is a test. All right. So he's going to place his hand under. Now, the, the word that usually when you read it, it will say place it under his thigh. Now, some scholars will say that this is God's um, uh, using like discretion in his language to describe this. I'm not sure if that's what it is, because I mean, when the, Bi the Bible doesn't be beat around the bush with things. I mean, like, say, for instance, uh, who is Abraham's wife? Well, it was his half sister. So it's like, you know, and, he's, and this is blatant. You know, there are certain things that are, you know, detestable in the Bible that the Bible talks about. It doesn't beat around the bush with it. So why would it beat around the bush with this? So, if, I mean, if the, if the word of God is going to say that, hey, I had the servant put, you know, his hand like right on up, you know, into Abraham's, uh, uh, right up under Abraham's genitalia, it's going to say it. I don't think it's going to beat around the bush with it. Now, like I said, I'm not even totally sure if that's what that means, but the wording is in there when you break the Hebrew down. OK, so now this is personally, this is my take on it. This is what I get out of it. Um, when he says he makes his covenant with me, he says, I want you to put my your hand up under my thigh. I do believe that it is up under his under thigh, you know, and uh, um, and it is probably close to his groin area, which is. Uh, proximal to the groin area. I mean, to the loin area. Right? It's 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 under there. It's like I said. This is a very familiar gesture. But I but as I've said before, y'all, when when you read things like this, and and there's this uh, uh this scrutiny, such a su such a, a a verse to be scrutinized. This is a place where God wants you to really camp out, and He wants you to see a picture of the future. All right. So he's going to put his hand up under the femur. Now we know now there's 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 things that are going on in here. Uh, there's elements. We know that uh, blood is made in the bones, right? And and we're gonna we're gonna pick out you know a long bone. We're gonna pick out the femur. Um, so we know that blood in our salvation, blood is a very uh, significant thing. Um, so from there we're we're gonna look at. Um, his, he's putting his hand up under his thigh and who, who, who also, who, who else have we seen that have done, has done a covenant like this? We got Abraham doing this with his sermon. All right. Now what, it, and also we have, uh, from Jacob to Joseph also makes this covenant. So there's this, a, a, a reoccurring thing with this covenant with the thigh. Um, now what did God tell Abraham? It's like, look, man, through you. Hey, you're gonna. We're, the, the, the nations are gonna be blessed through you, your seed, your seed. The nations are going to be blessed. All right. So, who is gonna? Who is gonna? Who is gonna be this seed? Well, we're talking about Jesus, right? We're talking about the Christ that's gonna come through the line of Abraham. Um. So he's gonna put his hand up under his thigh, and who else do we have that does this? We got from Jacob. To Joseph, Joseph, his name also is his when he when he's given the name uh, Zephaniah Panea, Zephaniah Panea means savior of the world. So we know what happened with Joseph, right? Joseph basically ended up, you know, he becomes basically ruler over Egypt, second to Pharaoh. Pharaoh, as far as they were concerned, was God over Egypt. And then you have sitting at his right hand, Joseph. So that could be like you got God and you got sitting at his right hand. You got Jesus. And then you're, this is going to be a, 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 an assumed throne between the Godhead through the triune God, right? So now Zephaneth Panea means savior of the world, also means bread. And who is Jesus? It's the bread of life, right? So you got between Jacob and Joseph, Jacob, I mean, Joseph takes this thigh oath. And you've got uh, the servant of Abraham, the father of the, of, of the faith who takes this thigh oath. Why is this so significant? Because when Jesus comes back, it's like, look, y'all, look for the pictures of Christ. That's what Revelation is about. Revelation isn't just about what's going to be revealed in the future. Revelation reveals things to you from the Old Testament. So if you're, if, if we're, if you're Jesus is like, look, look at the picture that the Old Testament paints of me. God told Abraham, my seed is going to come through you. That oath covenant is taken under the thigh. 
And what is written on the thigh of Jesus when he comes back? King of kings and lords of and Lord of lords. It's written on his thigh. He ain't going to have it written on his sleeve. It's not going to be written on his chest. He's not going to be wearing a hat that says king. It's going to be written on his thigh. Because he is the he is the fulfillment of that seed of Abraham. He is the one who will rule the nations. He is the one. It's him. So that's why when, he, when you zero in on these things, it's like, what's up with this thigh thing, dude? That's letting you know. That's Jesus. He's coming. He is that seed. He is the savior of the world. He is the bread of life. Okay? So just a little something to, you know, to chew on. Awesome. All right, all right. God is awesome. All right, so now let's see. Let's back up three. So that we may make you take an oath and Adonai, the God of heaven uh, of, and earth, that you will not take a wife from my son. So now really quick, an oath, y'all. So that, and we talked about this before. And, uh, uh, and even I, like I said, I was, I was studying on this and trying to get, you know, some, uh, you know, reconciliation on it. You know, when we're talking about making an oath. You know, we look in the, in the, in the, in the New Testament and it will tell you, do not swear by anything in heaven. Uh, anything on earth, uh, not a hair on your head or anything like that because you can't change your hair color. Uh, and, and, and don't even try to say, we can't too, you can dye your hair. It's like, no, no, you can't stop your hair from turning gray. You cannot change it from, from red to, to black or anything like that. You can dye it, but you can't actually, you know, genetically change it. That's the ladies. We can change your hair. <laughs> right? Don't, it's like, no, being a suicide blonde don't, don't, don't count. All right? So, um, now that's, that's swearing on material things. Or, or, or swearing on a creation. Even heaven is a creation. Right? Don't swear on creation. And, then, and, and, and ultimately, if you don't understand this, just let your yes be your yes or your no be your no. Do not include God in it. And don't try to take it to idols to validate what it is that you're swearing by. Yeah. Okay? Um, according to the scriptures, yeah, you can, you can swear by God. Now, one would say, now, doesn't this violate the Ten Commandments? Wouldn't, it, wouldn't that be taking the Lord's name in vain? No, it's taking the Lord's name in vain if you're lying about what you're swearing about. If you have the intention of saying yes, or, or if you're telling the truth, and this is, and this is your, your, your mission to go out and do it, uh, uh, and you're not violating the will of God and trying to do something outside of the will of God, you can swear by God. If that's your heart's desire to do the will of God. But if you're not intending to do the will of God and you're trying to use God to make yourself look honest when honesty is not what's in your heart, that is taking the Lord's name in vain. That is an aspect of it. Taking the Lord's name in vain is when you think that you can sin against somebody else and use God to justify it. Like, say, for instance, when people try to say, well, the Bible says that slavery is uh, illegal, therefore it's, it's okay to enslave people. That's taking the Lord's name in vain. The God doesn't say that. You can't force people into slavery. Or, or trying to say that God condones uh, polygamy or God condones incest because it's in the Bible. It's like, no, no, God did, it does, does not uh, condone these things. Allowances for these things is something totally different, and we see that these things turn out problematic. So, so, so to say, to use, try to use God to commit sins and, and try to give authority over your sins and say that it's okay, that's taking the Lord's name in vain. Mm -hmm. um, so in that, we're saying, uh, in, in, in taking an oath, you know, let your yes be your yes and your no be your no. If you mean it, then you go on ahead. But if that's not what it is, leave God out of it. Don't, don't try to drag God's name into it and, and, and don't do yourself a further a uh, disservice by by swearing by idols or other other creations. Hey, eh? you don't don't swear by the creation. Swear by the Creator, and you need to mean it. Yes. Uh, um, let's see. You know, because God is the one that you're gonna call. You know, to make an account. You're gonna have to answer. You are prepared to answer yeah. to God. You know, if you're if you're looking to break this covenant, and God is a just God. He understands that if you were if you tried and you failed. It's not like God's, oh, you swore, you're supposed to do this, and you have to. It's like God, he's a just God. If you fail, you know, because life got in the way or something like that, and, that, and that's the stuff that happens, God's not going to hold you accountable for that. He's like, God's not going to, he'll, he'll hold you accountable for quitting, and you quit, but you're supposed to endure in faith until the end. You do, you do everything that you can and let God do the rest if it's his will. All right, um, let's see. Can, all right, now here, now this is important, guys. This is this is kind of look up, seem a little bit off the topic, but it's it's still it's still um, this is still very relevant. When we get to here, on the contrary, what um, what it says, 
the God of heaven and the God of earth, that you will not take a wife for my son from among the daughters of the Canaanites. Okay, listen, guys. I keep, I, you know, um, and and I hope you guys are checking out my story, The Flood Chronicles. All right, it's on my website. You'll see where it says books. Uh, click that tab. Uh, grab my audio. Uh, it's not my audio book. It's just a book. You can read it in audio. It'll, it'll read it for you. But grab my book, The Flood Chronicles, y'all. It's, it's a fun way to, to, to get into uh, uh, the nature of God. Uh, people who answer this, like, they want these uh, questions addressed about why does God allow this and that. And the Flood Chronicles, Chronicles is, is a story of Noah in a sci-fi setting, and it addresses a lot of the questions that, you know, people have about God and why God does this and why he allows that. And, and kind of like, you know, these natures of God in a way where they can be entertained. And that's, you know, what we're trying to do, y'all. Uh, make these messages where it's like you can capture their interest and, you know, and go deep into uh, um, listening to what, you know, the word has to say. That's what you call the moral of the story. Thank you, right? So please check that out, y'all. Um, and uh, in that story, it does involve uh, the Nephilim, and it does involve the sons of God. Now, for those who keep trying to say, and the Bible does not say this, it doesn't say it. It does not say that the sons of God were trying to corrupt the bloodline for uh, to, to um, uh, interrupt the coming of the Messiah. The, the, the Bible doesn't say anything like that. The Bible tells you what the sons of God's motivation was. And it was this simple. They saw the woman is beautiful. That was it. And if anybody thinks that that is a big sin or that's lust and they're going to hell for that, then you had no business getting married yourself. Because when you looked upon your wife, what did you see? Chances are you saw a beautiful woman. And that was your motivation to want to talk to her. Right? You wanted to get with her because she was fine. And you hoped... That her personality and all that was just as beautiful as how she looked. So I don't think that it's a big crime that anybody looked at a woman and said, you know what? She's beautiful. I'd like to get to know her more and then come to discover I would like to marry her. Well, that's what the angels did. So why is that a big sin? And that's and That's all the Bible says. It doesn't say that they were motivated to try to interrupt the bloodline of Messiah. But I'll do, I, will, I will show you, and we just read it, where that is addressed. Abraham does not want Canaanites to interrupt the bloodline. That's why he's so specific that his seed has to carry on with his family. It cannot be interrupted by the Canaanites. All them giants and people that be talking, that they be talking that's not the Nephilim guys. All those giants and stuff like that that are in that land, those are all Canaanite folk. The, uh, the, the, uh, um, the Anakites, uh, the, the, uh, the Raphaim, the, uh, uh, the Zamzabim, all of them. Okay? Those, are, those are aspects of Canaan. They ain't got nothing to do with the Nephilim. Nothing to do with them. I know people... Right. And it's, it's in there. I know people try to say that, well, what didn't the scouts say that uh, they saw the Nephilim down there? Yeah, the Nephilim said that. And it also says that they gave an evil report. They never saw the Nephilim down there. They came three times. We saw the, uh, the Anakim. They came again. You know, they're talking about they saw the Anakim. And then they tried to come in to really make them scared so they wouldn't have to fight. They said, oh, we saw the, the, the Anakim and, and they're the, the, the descendants of the Nephilim. But the, it prefaces that report by saying they came and gave an evil report. They lied about what they saw. They never saw the Nephilim down there, and they never saw the descendants of the Nephilim down there. Okay? Um, so anyway, let's see. But the servant, so we wanted, I wanted to clear that up. And then right here is what it says. Let's see, we're reading on, on the contrary to my land and to my relatives, you must go and get a wife from my son Isaac, which I think is really strange. He's living in Canaan, but he doesn't want a wife from there. But he wants him to go get a, 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 a wife from the place that God told him to leave. Okay? So Abraham's, like, Abraham doesn't, Abraham's not supposed to go back there. Isaac ain't supposed to go back. And he's going to send his servant back there to get him a wife from the place that he was told to leave from. It's okay. You know, but, that, it's, but this is specific, y'all. This is specific stuff so we can render the birth of the Messiah, right? Okay. So we, let's go to six. Abraham said to him, uh, see to it that you don't return my son there. Why don't you go back there, man? Adonai, the God of heaven, who took me from my father's house and from my native land and who spoke to me and made a pledge to me saying to your seed, I will give this land. 
He will send his angel before you. He will take a wife for my way. You will take a wife for my son from there. If the woman is not willing to follow after you, then you will be free from the oath of mine. Nevertheless, you must not return my son there. So the servant put his hand under the thigh of Abraham, his master, and he made a pledge to him concerning this matter. Then the servant took ten of his master's camels, and left the best of master, his master's stuff in his hand. Then he arose and went to Aram Naharim. I think that means uh, it's the same as, as Mesopotamia. Yes. Uh, right? Mesopotamia. Two the, rivers. The two rivers. Thank you. All right. Um, let's see. Master's camels. Where was I at? Uh, to Nahor's city. Nahor is uh, Abraham's big bro. Yeah. Okay. Um, then he made the camels kneel down outside the city by the well of water at, every, at evening time. The time for the going out to draw water. Adonai, the God of Abraham, a master, he said, please make something happen before me today and show loyalty to Abraham, my master. Look, I am standing by the spring of water and the daughters of the men of the city are going out to draw water. Now let it be that the young woman to whom I say, please tip your jar so that I may drink. And she will say, drink, and I'll also water your camels. Let her be the one you have appointed for your servant, Isaac. So by this, I'll know that you have showed graciousness to my master. According to this, okay, now he's given a specific prayer, y'all. He's, he's, he's like, this is what I, but I think it's also interesting, y'all, that, that, you know, here's the thing now is people be like, you know, well, how come God doesn't answer my prayers? He does answer prayers. He says no, right? If, if, uh, if, if you don't get what you want. Um, in this instance, you know, the Lord, you know, is, is uh, the, access, the accessibility that we had to God in, in this time is different. Uh, and in this, and like I said, God is, is, is shaping the way we see. He's probably just more hands on at this point. An angel is with them at this point. And um, now I want to say, well, how come, now, now I want to address, you know, people be like, well, how come that's the, not the way it is now? Y'all, we're, we're under, um, we are under, uh, not only are we under grace, but the condition, y'all. I know, I, know, I know this sounds really weird, and it may sound like I'm speaking out of school here, but the condition of grace is faith. Y'all, we, we're not given, because God had already came and proven things, and people didn't believe it. And Jesus, even Abraham was like, oh, really? You know, Sarah was like, oh, really? God's doing things like right in front of them. And they're still like, oh, really? You know, they didn't get it. And then Jesus shows up and he's doing things. And then they didn't get it. Now, this, this kind of gets on God's nerves because God's like, if I'm giving you this empirical evidence of who I am and you still don't get it, you know, I, I really got a problem with you. But now in our generation, it's grace. But to get the grace, you got to have the faith because we're not going to see these things that they saw. We have to read it and we have to believe it. That's our trial. Our trial today is to believe according to what was written. Now, I'm, you know, I'm reading it. I'm like, hey, look, it's evidence to me. This Old Testament has painted a, a, a pretty um, uh, 3D picture of, of, of Christ as far as I'm concerned. I'm a believer. All right. Um, but. We're, we're under a different time, y'all, because like I said, God didn't already, he's, he's already showed up and he's already done the things that are worthy of proof and worthy of belief. In our generation now, we're just going to have to believe it. Our prayers may not be answered the way that their prayers were answered. We may not, you know, be able to get to walk with angels the way that they, get to, they got to walk with angels in our time. All right. Because and, and, and the thing is, all this is important to understand about faith. Remember, y'all, even demons know that God exists. Even demons know. So us. For us, knowing that God exists ain't enough because the demons didn't have the faith that God was really worthy of being rule of the universe. The, the, it's like you got to have the faith. At some point, you know, it's like you don't want to believe you don't want to believe it. It's like, look, I'm, a, I'm a, you know, I'm a I'm an angel that thinks that, you know what, I, I got my own ideas of how I want to do things. And God, I don't think, you know, the, I don't, I don't want to do it your way. So for any for, for Christians out there, you know, who be talking about. You know, uh, you know, God and politics don't go together and, 
you know, there's no politics in heaven and there's no, you know, there's, and, and they, they want to stay out of the political thing. It's like, look, y'all, the reason why there was a war in heaven, the reason why you had a confederacy of angels is because of politics. Yes. There was a war in heaven because of politics. The politics of God didn't jive with Satan. Satan yes. thought his policies were better. Yep. All right. And he got a, a bunch of, he rallied a bunch of angels to go along with what he said. They didn't know how good they had it. And they had their own idea of whatever policies that they wanted to do. Wanted to do. Right? So, and, and basically what I'm saying is, y'all, um, right now in the state that we're in, um, we're, we, our, our task is to just believe. We have to believe it. And this is how we get the grace. So in this, you know, this angel is with them and God is going to answer his prayer. He's, he's given a specific prayer. And, and, and the, the nice thing about the guy is that, you know, even though he's like, he can pray to God and God is going to notice that he didn't make a prayer for himself. He's making a prayer for somebody else. Yeah. Very unselfish, right? Very selfless dude. It's like, look, yo, hey, God, can you hook up my master? Can you hook him up? <laughs> hey, um, let's see. And you pointed out earlier that he was praying about the character of this young lady. Right? Exactly. Thank you. He, he's, he's praying. He's like, you know, hey, she, you know, give, give me a quality woman. He wasn't, you know, it's like, hey, hey, God. Hey, can you hook it up, man? I mean, can, can you just make her like thick in all the right places? You know what I'm saying? Like all her teeth straight and stuff like that. You know, you know make her a pretty, look, pretty young thing, a little PYT, right? And you know, he's like, you know, it's like God. He's like, I, I, I think I got an idea of what she, she can look like. I'm, I'm good at making women. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm good at pairing folk. You know, uh, <laughs> um, so he's talking about her character. You know, he, he wants, he wants his master to be happy. Okay, and um. Let's see. I know that you have shown gracious to my master. Now, before he had finished speaking, before he was even finished, God moved swiftly and answered his prayer. Behold, there was Rebecca, Becca, right? Becca, who was born to Bethuel, son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, going out with her jar on her shoulder. Now, the young woman was very good looking. See, God had already hooked it up. So she was fine, right? Okay, so she was good looking. Oh no! You mean she was pretty? I hope. I hope that that when uh, Isaac sees her, he doesn't think that she's beautiful or anything, because that would be a big sin. That would be lust. Oh no! Just like the angels, they saw the women that were beautiful, and oh no, that's a big sin. It's like no, it's not a sin to see a woman is beautiful, right? Dang it. Okay. Uh, she went down to the spring and uh, filled her jar and came up. Then the servant ran to meet her and said, please let me sip a little water from your jar. So she said, drink, my Lord. And she lowered her jar onto her hand and gave him a drink. Now, when she finished giving him a drink, she said, I'll draw water for your camels until they were finished drinking. So, I mean, it's like, dude, that's some, that's some work. You know, it's like she carrying around this heavy jar, and it's got some water in it. She's going to give him some water. She's going to water his can. You would think that this woman is like some serious corn-fed, like, big woman, right? It's like her name should be Beth Ewell or something like that. That sounds like a pretty, you know, that sounds like a thick lady, like Hildegard or, you know, uh, uh, you know, um, Nor uh, what, what what's another? Bambushka or something like that. It's like, uh, 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 I'm sorry if, if my... Uh, I don't mean to be clowning around on like European names. So just they, they sound like really strong names. Okay, I'm not I'm not tripping on like you know European names. Um, it's like I know y'all could trip on inner city names like you know Laquanda. It sound like prescription <laughs> prescription drugs and stuff like that. I, I get it. You know, it's like yeah. Let me. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, so where was I at before I got to clown around? Why well, well, you got to be class clowns though? So you can't be focused, man. Um, let's see. Um, finish drinking again so quickly. Where was I at 20? Thank you. Thank you. Somebody, uh, somebody's paying attention in class. <laughs> Teacher's pet. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Keep you for her detention. <laughs> All right. So she quickly poured out her jug into the trowel, ran back to the well to draw water. So she had, she most likely had that karate body. You know, she was just probably just like toned, you know, looked like she'd been working, you know, like working out, you know, abs and stuff. You know, looking like she's been using a thigh master. It's just, just like looking, she's looking good. You know, she has strong arms. Right? 
All right. While the man continued to pay close attention to her, keeping silent in order to know whether or not Adonai had made his way successful. Now, after the camels had finished drinking, the man took out a nose ring of gold weighing half a shekel. Man, that sounds heavy. I'm not, you know, I, <laughs> it's like this thing dangling from her nose. Oh, thank you so much. It's very kind of you. You know, I, I, I don't know. It's a half a shekel. It's probably, you know, I don't know, it's made of ounces. I don't know, half an ounce. I don't, I don't know. Uh, my, my Hebrew metrics aren't that good. So, um, anyway, <laughs> shekel and two braids. Now, that's supposedly like this is a big sin. This kind of like, you know, piercing your nose, like, you know, when you have like a more, you know, traditionalist. It's like, oh, you're piercing your nose and that's that's a, a, a sin to God or anything like that. Um, it's like, well, I don't know. God's not looking like he's got. It. I mean, if you're, if you're doing a piercing of nose, that's something sacred. That's not something unholy. Uh, and I'm not even sure if uh, uh, if it's like a piercing through her nose. It sounds like he said he put it on her nose. So it might have been like a cup or something like that. And forgive me if, if uh, um, you know, uh, my, my Hebrew uh, tri uh, traditions are a little uh, shoddy here. Uh, and, and by all means, you know, if, uh, if y'all have a, a comment on that input, please uh, uh, contribute to the conversation and, and let me know. Um, but bottom line is, y'all, it's not it's not like some big sin to have a nose ring. Uh, I don't even know if it was a piercing. It might have been a cuff because it says placed it on her nose. Uh, I just hope it wasn't like, a, you know, like one of them, you know, kind of, you know, rings that goes through the septum. I hope it was like one through the nostril. I think that's how they did. Uh, you know, getting through the septum, that's a little bit more, you know, that's, that's, I think that's more pagan stuff right there. It's like you're trying to get into your animal spirit and stuff like that. It's like, look, I got a ring in my nose. I'm a, I'm a cow or a bull or a pig or something. You know, uh, I, I ain't into that. Uh, uh, let's see. Or, you know, and just really quick, you know, when people talk about like, a, um, you know, scarring themselves, you know, and uh, uh, tattooing and things like that. Uh, really quick, y'all, when, when the Bible talks, so they say, well, tattoos are a big sin and you're going to go to hell for, for wearing tattoos. Uh, no, you guys, the, the full account says that do not tattoo or scar yourself for the dead. Um, meaning that if you're if you're, you know, scratching some ink into you or you're trying to bloodlet yourself and things like that. Um, and if you're doing them for uh, to to uh, consort with demons, that's what it's talking about. Tattooing yourself in itself is not evil. It's not wicked. If you're doing it to draw the attention of demons or if you're doing it for the case of, of drawing attention to yourself for self-glorification, that's a problem. Yes. Hey, and I'm guilty of it. I've done it. I've tattooed myself for the glorification of myself. Yeah, I didn't do it for witchcraft. Hey, but uh, but that kind of and, and plus that, you know, and that stuff was unclean. You know, so when you're scratching yourself and you're letting out blood, you know how, glo uh, how, how God is about exposing blood to other things. And if you're in the medical profession, you know, one of the first things that you learn even today is that all bodily fluids are suspect. It's unclean. Yes, yes. It's just period. So that's the way it was in the Old Testament, too. That's why God frowned upon it. But it was mainly because, and it tells you, do not do this for the dead. It means that people are trying to, you know, they want to uh, see if they can speak to the dead. And, and uh, a heads up, you never speak to the dead, ever. You, that's not who you're speaking to. If you're thinking that you're speaking to somebody from the other side, you are not. You are speaking to demons, masquerading as those who you think that you, you, you have lost, you know. My, exactly. My condolences to anybody who's also in there. Please do not go down the road. Because I know some people try to do that. They try to consort mediums or want to speak with psychics and stuff like that. Y'all, that's, that's, uh, that's, it's of the devil. What about so. people who tattoo themselves? Like, mm. I see this all the time, mm. almost every day out in the grocery store. People who have tattoos of like their dead brother or their dead mother or father, family members. Mm -hmm. Is that Does that fall into that category? Or? You know, once again... You know, it's uh, you know, because now what brings that brings to mind is you know, let the bed, the dead bury the dead, uh, you know, but we won't, we don't want to like get too far into uh, um, you know, saying that this is a big ta uh, taboo with the tattoo. Um, <laughs> if a person is is uh, memorializing a person like on their skin or something like that, um, as long as you're not idolizing that person, as long as um, uh, you don't think that you can communicate with that person. Uh, by uh, tattooing on it, that's that's a whole nother thing. Uh, but you know, if you're just wanting to to honor that person, and, and you're not under the assumption that you can speak to that person, or or uh, um, uh, or like I said, or, or you're idolizing that person, that's that's something totally different. Um, you know, so trying to bring glory to yourself or glory to some uh, someone else, or trying to communicate with the dead, that's what the Bible is talking about with tattoos. But you know, if you're going to uh, um, you know, make your body 
like a piece, uh, 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 an art piece, um, you know, for the glory of God. It's like, look, you know, some people want to draw. If, like, like, say, for instance, I got tats, you know, and, and I, I uh, you know, I may dress a certain way and stuff like that. Uh, it's not so much so that I can draw attention to myself. Because ultimately, it's like now that I've got your attention, hey, can I tell you about that dude, Jesus? Amen. That's, what it's, that's really what it's about. Now, there's a point where, you know, a person can go overboard with it. Uh, you know what? I'm going to tell you guys a quick story, uh, if, if I may, if I may. Uh, I don't even, this is a long chat. It's like 66 verses in this. We might have to make this part two anyway. Yeah. Um, I met this guy, right? And uh, I won't disclose who his name is. He's, he's a publisher. That's, that's, that's not important. Right? What's important is, is that he's a Muslim, all right? And uh, as, as we were having a conversation, and he, he disclosed that he was Muslim by how many wives he had. I'm like, wow. And he's talking about how this woman is getting on his nerves. Like, oh, one wife is like, oh, that's driving me crazy. And I'm like, okay, that's interesting. It's like, if a woman is driving you crazy, why would you want multiple wives that, that drive you nuts? It's like, dude, it, has, it looks like a hard time. You, like, you're having a hard time keeping up with one. So, but long story short, you know, being that he is of the, uh, the religion of the devil, one of them anyway, um, listen here. He had, you know, some piercings and stuff like this. It's like, dude, you are, I mean, you know, you're pretty moderate Muslim. You're a very liberal Muslim, I can see. Uh, you know, but he had these piercings and stuff like that. I mean, he, he looked like, you know, trying to look like, trying to look like Steven Tyler or something like that. But he was like in his 60s. But Steven Tyler, I think he's in his 60s too. But anyway, all right. So he's got his nails painted and stuff like that. He's got his nose rings and, you know, he's got earrings and stuff like that. And uh, and then he goes on to say that he wants to get a whole bunch of piercings, right? He said, he said I want to get like 56 piercings in my face. And then he said, you want to know why? And I was like, well, do tell. He says, because I want to shine. I was like, okay, well, you know, in the Hebrew, when you break down the serpent, that serpent that was in the garden, also included in the Hebrew, when you look up at, you know, what, you know, the, that serpent, which also means snake, serpent, but it also means the shining one. All right. So this person is talking about how he wants to shine. So what I'm saying is the point is, is that when you try to get all these tattoos and modifications and piercings and stuff like that. That's a person who's, and even if a person tries to call himself a Christian and they got all these piercings in them and stuff like that, you've gone beyond assuming that you're bringing glory to God. You are really just wanting attention for yourself. You want to be the one shining. They don't try to pretend it's like, you know, that, oh, I'm doing this for the glory of God. I don't know about that. Okay? I mean, there's, there's you know, there's, there's a, some moderation at, at a limit. It's just like, look, you know, that, and you know what? And that's hard to say because who can who can put a number on? But I think there's a point where you can kind of look at somebody like, you know what? I don't think, you know, you're really interested in pointing people to the Lord. You want the attention. Yeah. You want. It, all right? So I think that's reasonable. Yeah. I think, just, just putting that out there. Right? God don't mind tattoos. He put a tattoo on Cain. <laughs> yeah, oh, he, he tattooed Cain. You know, he didn't even. It was like he didn't even like Cain. You know, but it's like you know, I'm gonna tattoo you. I'm gonna show you some mercy. And even later on, and, and God, and God's got some tattoos later on for folks who are who are gonna be faced. You know, and let's hope we're not there when that happens. Hopefully, uh, you know, pray to God that we are raptured. And uh, uh, but you know, there will be those. You know, if they're left behind and they decide not to take the mark of the beast, God's gonna tattoo. Those, you know, who do not take the mark. Yeah. So he's like, oh, God's cool. And then, you know, God's cool with some tattoos. You know, he's, even people who, you know, he'll put some tattoos on people who didn't exactly choose him. Just to show them that he's, you know, I'm a nice guy. You know, I got some, I got some ink work for you. I believe God refers to his tattoos as seals. Yeah, there you go. I want to get sealed, man. Look at that. Yeah, that's, a, that's a good sealage right there, dude. Look at that. I'm going to get a whole sleeve. I'm going to get a, I'm going to get a sleeve seal. Right? Right there. Double sleeve, right? Uh, okay. Uh, all right, where we at? Where we at? Shut up, Zoe. Read the word. Where was I at? Okay. Where was I at? Uh, teacher's, teacher's pet. 23. 23. Okay. I remember when you were 23. Oh, honey. Woo! <laughs> all right. Let me put a ring in your nose. <laughs> she said to him, uh, and it, it wasn't that long ago, by the way. All right, let's see. All right, 23. Who's da girl, whose daughter? You! I bet your daddy is fine. <laughs> anyway, all right, whose daughter are you? He said, please tell me, 
Is there room in your daddy's house for us to spend the night? She said to him, I'm the daughter of Bethuel, son of Milcah, whom she bore to Nephor. She also said to him, there's both straw and plenty of feed with us, as well as room to spend the night. Then the man bowed down to her and worshipped Adonai and said, Blessed be Adonai, the God of my master Abraham, who has not forsaken his loyalty and his truth toward my master. As for me, Adonai has guided me in the way to the house of my master's brothers. Oh, and by the way, guys, like, and, and we know that he was sent with an angel. This doesn't, and, and you know, you know, um, just to clarify what I was talking about earlier. Yeah, y'all, we we have angels. Okay? You know, and and, it's, I know, and I know that people be like, well, how come if we got guardian angels, how come they're not guarding us? From, you know, disease? How come they don't guard us from accidents? How come, you know, it's like, it seems that people are still getting hurt. Seems that people are still going hungry. Seems that people are still getting disease. Look like these angels ain't doing that much good. Well, y'all, like I said, our condition of grace is faith. And the angels, what the angels do that are dispatched to us, they don't guard our mortality. That's not what they're here for. They're here to guard our immortality with God. With Jesus, we're immortal either way. We're either immortal as uh, uh and and um, and with the new album, if I may plug the album, I got one of one of the songs that you know I'll be doing is uh measured in sky, and uh, measured in sky. The hook of it is forever smoke or shine. So you will either shine with the Lord or you will be an aspect of the smoke that will rise to the Lord in torment forever. All right, you don't want to be that. So. Now, the angels, the job of the angels today is that it's not so much their job to protect us from what happens in the world. Their job is to help protect our salvation because demons are attacking us all the time, all the time. Right. So they're always, you know, trying to, you know, you know, tell us things and pray upon the wickedness that's already in our heart. And embolden us to, to just 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 give into our and have no struggle with sin, just a full-on partner with sin. Well, the angels are there to keep us locked in. They help to fight off the demons. It's a spiritual war, y'all. We are in the middle of a spiritual war. And the angels help guard us from the influence that will cause us to let go of Christ. How do I substantiate this? Because even when the devil came to attack Jesus, even the angels came to minister to Jesus. Okay? At the end of the war, at the end of the battle, here come the angels ministering to him, ministering to him. When, when Jesus is praying to God, the angels come to minister to him. They're, they're helping to keep him holding. Did the angels guard him from what was going to happen to Jesus? Did they, did they guard his mortality, to say, uh, 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 per se? No. They guarded his mind. They guarded his salvation. That's what they were there to minister for. It's like keeping Jesus on point. Even God has the seraphim letting you know, you're holy, you're holy, you're holy. Remember we talked about that last time? So you got angels that are with us the same way. Hang on, man. Keep your grip. Keep your grip. What's that? A demon? Boom. They take that flaming sword to him. Back off. Okay? They're guarding us from them. But life is going to do what it's do. Life is going to take its toll on us, unfortunately. Like I said, I never mean to sound cavalier about this sort of stuff. I'm like, hey, yeah, life, give me what you got. That stuff sucks. But the, but the angels that are dispatched to guard us now, they're, they're there to guard our salvation, not necessarily guard this body that, that ultimately we've got to end up giving up. You know, we got we got to give up this body at some point. We can't take this body into heaven. Okay? That's an awesome word. All right, so, you know, it's just, you know, just, I'm trying, I'm trying to go by what the word says, y'all. I'm not I trying to, you know. Right? That's right. All right. So um, where was I at? Teacher's pet? Okay. <laughs> Students uh, or more like teacher's aides. Man. I'm more of a teacher's aide, man. I'm not. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm trying to be teacher's pet myself. I'm trying to be my teacher's pet. And so you're, you're teacher's aide's pet. That's teacher's aide pet. Uh, teacher's aide. I hope you said it might be a teacher and have aides. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> All right. uh, where was that? Where was that? Okay. Pay attention. All right. Then the young woman ran and told her mother. She's like the like the giddy schoolgirl. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> she's just running out, and she's all excited. Oh my god! Somebody wants to go out with me. All right. And uh, you know, because she's most likely she's young. She's like a teenager. You know, yeah. a teeny bopper, right? <laughs> um. <clears throat> so let's see. Now Rebecca had uh, a brother, <laughs> right? Old, a protective older brother, and his name was Laban. Uh oh, that dude. <laughs> uh, we're going to read about him later. 
Yeah. Laban and Laban ran outside to the man at the spring. As soon as he saw the nose ring, he said, "Girl, what's gotten into you? <laughs> what's, your, what's that thing you got hanging out your nose?" <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. And saw the ring and the bracelets. Like, dang, girl, you man, we got some money. <laughs> he got a sister or uh, uh, bracelets on his sister's hands. And when he heard the words of Rebecca, his sister, saying, "Thus the man said to me." He went to the man. There he was standing by the camels at the spring. So he said, come in. Blessed up Adonai. Why are you standing outside when I've tied it up in the house and, and there's a room for the camels? <laughs> come in here, man with money. Uh, <laughs> so the man came to the house and he unloaded the camels, straw and feed were, were given to the camels and the water to wash his feet and the feet of the men who were with him. Hey, that foot washing tradition is, is uh, you know, is, is, goes back pretty far. Um, let's see. We're with him. Food was placed before him to eat. But he said, I won't eat until I've stated my business. Yeah. So he said, well, go ahead, man. What you got to say? Get yeah. off your chest. Say it with your chest. Uh, I only saw that by accident. I, mean, I wasn't like, I didn't, I didn't pay to watch it. What's his name? Kevin? Kevin Hall? Uh, it was kind of funny. Even. All right. <laughs> yeah. uh, he said, Adonai has blessed my master very much so that he, he has become great and he has given to him flocks of sheep and cattle, silver and gold, male slaves, and female slaves, camels and donkeys. Now, Sarah, my master's wife, gave birth to a son from a master after she was old and he gave him everything he owns. Then my master made me take an oath saying you must not take a wife for my son from among the daughters of the Canaanites. Reiterating. Reiterating, right? <clears throat> in whose land I'm dwelling. Instead, you must go to my father's house and to my family and take a wife for my son. So it's like, you know, we got to, this is, this is like just making sure that the genealogy is, is trackable, y'all. It stays pretty pure. Mm -hmm. It's This is a keeping it the family kind of thing. It's not like, <laughs> you know, God is condoning incest or anything like that because, you will, as you will read, God will mark this as detestable. Right mm -hmm. now, you know, this is a point of bloodline. Yeah, right now you know? it's kissing cousins. It's kissing cousins. All right. Well, actually, but she's, she, this is, a, this is, Rebecca's a first cousin, I think. Kissing cousin, like what? Uh, I don't know, second, third? I ain't even kissing my cousin, so I don't really know the number. All right, but you know, I don't. I don't know if she. I think she's. This sounds like a first cousin, okay? uh, but I guess she was hot. <laughs> uh, well, I wonder what their family reunions are like. Yeah, so, family reunions is, is slash speed dating. Um, let's see. I lost my place again, honey. Uh -oh. Where you at, teacher's aid pet? <laughs> <laughs> I did it. That's when you know you're really entertaining and when you can mess up the concentration of other people in the classroom. You're not paying to the teacher. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. You're not paying attention to Jesus as he's speaking to us. <laughs> Which one was it? Uh, I think 38. Oh, all right. I'll take your word for it. Um, 39. Okay, but he said to my master, suppose the woman don't want to come back with me. So he's just, he's just reiterating the story. So he said to me, Adonai, before whom I have walked continually, will send his angel with you, and he will make your way successful, and you will take a wife from a son, from a family, and from a father's household. Then you'll be free from my oath. If you come to my family, and if they don't give her to you, then you'll be free from the oath. So I came today to the spring and I said, Adonai, the God of Abraham, my master, if you are really going to make my way upon which I am walking successful, look, I'm standing by the spring of water. So let it be that the unmarried girl who is going out to draw water to whom I'll say, Please give me a little water to drink from your jug. And she'll say to me, you drink and I'll draw water for your camels. Let her be the woman whom Adonai appoints for my master's son. I had not yet finished speaking to my heart. Interesting. He didn't say I have not yet finished speaking to my God. 
but to my heart because that's where God is as far as he's concerned. He's, he's got, he's taking God into full account. It's like, hey, God is in here. All right, so he's he's totally he's this is a, this is a deep dude of faith right here. Um, let's see. Speaking of my heart, and behold, there was Rebecca going out. Her jug was on her shoulder, and she went down to the spring and drew water. So I said to her, "Please give me some of that drink." <laughs> and she quickly lowered her jug off her head and said, "Drink." And I'll also water your camels. So I drank, and she also watered the camels. Then I asked her, "Whose daughter are you, girl?" And she said, the daughter of Bethuel, Nahor's son, from whom milk aborted him. Then I placed the ring on her nose. It's like, that's a weird thing. It's like, come here, come here, come here. You're digging in somebody's face and putting nose on there. I mean, well, I mean, you know, you go to the shop, you know, so I guess you can have like a, you know, a, a piercing artist. You know, they'll be digging in your nose. And, you know, and, and, so I guess maybe it's not that strange. I thought it was like, yeah, that's a weird thing. Like, Fool, I don't know you. Get your hands on my face with that thing. I don't know your hands have been. I, mean, I don't care if that's... Oh, I'm sorry, is that gold? <laughs> is that gold? Yeah. Oh, well, here. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead and dig on deep in there. I don't, you know, it's like it's like usually when people like digging their nose, they talk about digging for gold. This dude, I already got some gold to stick in your nose. <laughs> uh, but anyway, um, I'll also water your camels. Oh, no, I read that already because they said it already twice. So there's no reason for you to read it three or four times. So uh, the daughter of Bethel and her son, the milk aborted him. Then I placed this ring on her nose and the bracelets on her hands. I bowed down and worshipped Adonai and blessed Adonai, the God of my master, Abraham, who guided me on the true way to take the daughter of my master's brother for his son. So now, if you're really going to show loyalty and truth to my master, tell me. But if not, tell me and I'll turn to the right or to the left. Then Laban and Bethuel answered, and they said, the matter proceeds from Adonai. We cannot speak to you bad or good. Rebekah is before you. Take her and go and let her become a wife for our master's son, just as Adonai has spoken. How are we doing? All right. Let's see if, we, see if we can pull this out. All right, pull it and finish up. We're coming in the home stretch, home stretch. Hope you guys are, are hanging in there with me. All right. Now, when Abraham's servant heard their words, he bowed down to the ground to Adonai. Then the servant brought out articles silvers of, of, of silver and gold and garments and gave them to Rebecca. Bling, bling. Yes. He also gave precious gifts to her brothers and to her mother. Got to gotta, 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 uh, butter up the mother-in-law. <laughs> right. Then they ate and drank. And drank he and the men who were with him and spent the night. When they arose in the morning, he said, send me off to my master. But her brother with her mother said, let the young woman stay with us a few days or 10 <laughs> or 10 uh, afterwards she may go. But he said, man, don't delay me since Adonai has made my way successful. Send me off so that I can go to my master. So they said, we'll call the young woman and let's ask her opinion. Oh, you mean uh, the female gets an opinion? <laughs> in the Bible where women are supposed to only shut up and be silent? Right. She gets an opinion? Interesting. It's good for you Bible bashers. That's yeah. Bible, you know, misogynist or whatever. All right. Honey, I didn't even know that before. <laughs> I'm glad you pointed that out. Uh. And uh, verse 18. Now let's see. So we'll ask the young woman. Thank you, woman. And, uh, and let's ask her opinion. Then they called Rebecca and said to her, will you go with this man? Yeah, I'll go. <laughs> yep, yep, Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Felicia. <laughs> I'm gone. So they sent Rebecca, their sister, off with her nanny. Like I said, this was, you know, teeny bopper. Right? <laughs> oh, goody, goody, I'm going to go. All right. And Abraham's servant and his men. And they blessed Rebecca and said to her, our sister, may you become thousands of ten thousands. Ooh. And may your seed possess the gate of those who hate him. Now, check this out. Now, we're already getting a picture of how our brother Laban is. Oh, stay a little while. Trying to keep him there longer than he should be. Isn't that what this was going to do to uh, Jacob, ain't it? Yes. Jacob, won't you stick around? <laughs> Jacob, won't you stick around a little while? He's got a this. <laughs> Laban's got a bad habit of this, man. Laban, let people. You're a time stealer, man. You be trying. It's like you know people you have a conversation with, and you be trying to like hint and like you know kind of walk toward the door. You be trying to you know be trying to end the conversation. Like man, I got stuff to do, man. I got this. Like look, and they just be drop another conversation with you. Just just keep roping you back. Like, look, I got stuff to do. 
You're trying to get off the phone. You, you decide, you decide, okay, 10 minutes of conversation. You already saw your opening so you can get out of the conversation because you got stuff to do. 20 minutes. Oh, man, 30 minutes. It's like, dude, I've been on the phone with you 45 minutes, man. I'm trying to get off the phone. Right? Or it's like, you know, people just be time stealers. It's like, that's what LeBron is. He's a time stealer. Dang you, LeBron. All right? All right, let me see. And then they will go to this. And then also, uh, now check this out. And may your seed possess the gate of those who hate him. We're talking about Christ, right? One with the keys to hell and death. He's got the key, the gate, y'all. Remember, y'all, the gate, when it talks to you, because that's just seemed like a mysterious thing. You know what, folks, when they talk about, you know, when Jesus says the gates of hell will not prevail against the church, right? The gates, was like, what do you mean the gates? What, what, are gates like, you know, are, are, are some sort of warriors or something like that? No, y'all, the gate of hell. The gate of hell is an image. And the image says that Christ is not the only way. The gates of hell, you just like the gates of hell is, is that Jesus is not the Messiah. That's what the gates of hell say. So once you fall into this idea that Jesus, would, uh, uh, the church, the real church, doesn't fall for the lie. Those who are in Christ don't fall for the lie that Jesus ain't the only other way. Je that if we, uh, we only accept the truth that he is the way, the truth, and the life. There is no other way to the Father except through him. So this is the gate that she's referring to. He is, is uh, he is the, uh, what does it say? He possesses the gate. He is the one who will rule that gate. So ultimately, you may have this gate of hell. It's like, Jesus, uh, yeah, I'm taking ownership of that gate. I'm taking over that gate. It's my gate now, baby. I got the keys. I dare you to come and try to take my money. You get hurt. All right? Then Rebecca got up with her, with her maids. And they mounted the camel, camels and followed after the man. So the servant took Rebecca and departed. Now Isaac had come from visiting Beer Lahai Roy and was living in the land of the Negev. Isaac went out to meditate, strolling in the field at dusk. Then he lifted up his eyes and saw, behold, camels were coming. Rebecca also lifted up her eyes and saw Isaac and, just, and, fell, off, and fell off her camel. You know, I you know, I kind of imagine like uh, Rebecca being like, "What's that girl? What's that? What's that TV show, The Middle?" Oh yeah. Isn't her name Rebecca too? I don't, I don't know if it's Rebecca or not, but you know, the girl, the giddy like teenager, yes. and she's like really clumsy and stuff yeah. like that. You know, but she, she's she's is her cute. name Sue? Yeah. Yeah. and she's cute. You know, she's it's like I kind of imagine yeah. like Rebecca like looking like that, just like all giddy and clumsy, <laughs> just falls off this camel, right? But you know, but she's she's adorned. Right? She's, she, she's going to pull her. She's got the bracelet. She's got the nose ring. She's going to have the veil over her. Yeah. Hey? And, uh, and she's basically going to descend. She's going to fall off this camel. It's like, doesn't it say that what New Jerusalem is going to be adorned as a bride? Yes. And, you know, it's going to come out of heaven? Hey? So are we starting to see like a picture of the marriage? You know, are we starting to see a picture of that right here? Uh, Isaac, who was, the, who was the son that, that uh, was supposed to be forsaken by Abraham? And then the substitution was brought in with the sheep and everything. Oh, we started to see some pictures here. Awesome. All right. So, um, and, and, and speaking of looks, it's like, I'm glad, you know, it's like, because this is, I mean, I, I can imagine Isaac is uh, there's pretty excited, man, because, you know, he's probably like, you know, this is a blind date. You know, this is essentially, this is a blind date. And, uh, you know, and, and, and my man, the servant is asking for a woman, like, with good characters. I mean, I hope she's, like, good character and stuff like that. But, you know, you're going on a blind date. You don't want to hear that the girl got good character. You know, at least she's nice. You know what I'm saying? Oh, hey, so what does she look like, man? She said, well, she's really nice, man. I mean, you know, you know, she, she's, you know, you can tell that she was raised. <laughs> you can tell that she was raised, right? It's like, man, I don't want to hear that. Is she fine? Right? Is she fine? That's what I want to know. Because when she comes up, man, when she's coming up with them camels, I want to know. I don't want to, it's like, you went out there with 10 camels, don't you come back to me with 11 camels. Funny. You know what I'm saying? This girl better not look like one of them camels. It's like, which one is supposed to be riding what? Which, which one are you? Okay? Uh, I, 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 the only thing I can tell is that I see a camel with a nose ring. Oh, <laughs> and some bracelets. And, 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 and a veil on. It's, it's like, look, it's like, what did, you, did you bring me the, uh, 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 what's that camel's name from the, uh, uh, from the camel cigarettes. Joe Camel? Did you bring me Josephine Camel? He's like, did she come with a pack of cigarettes or something like that? You better go on back. <laughs> it's where you came from. Anyway, I'm sorry. I don't like blind dates. Don't you don't don't do that no more. Uh, then let me see. Rebecca lifted up her eyes and saw Isaac. Then she fell off her camel. Then she said to the servant, Who is that man there who is walking in the field <clears throat> uh, to meet us? Interesting. All right, who is that? 
I don't know. It's like, what, what am I getting right there? It's like, you, it's like you got, who is that man walking in the field to meet us? The servant said, he is my master. So she took the veil and covered herself. Then the servant recounted to Isaac all the things he had done. Then Isaac brought her into the tent of Sarah, his mother, meet moms, and he loved her. So Isaac was comforted after the loss of his mother. Go cling to his wife. All right. All right, man. Was, um, I was, I'm sorry. That, that thing kind of stirred me right there. It's like he was walking in the fields. Like I imagine, like, you know, Jesus, you know, we, out there with his disciples, like walking in the fields, oh, wow. you know, and they're picking the grains and stuff like that. And Jesus, once again, kind of like giving hints <laughs> of who he is. You know, and they come out there and go, why are you eating grain on the Sabbath, man? You know, what you, what you doing, man? It's like, hey, man, don't you remember that this is what David did? He was out there, you know, eating bread, you know, hooking up with it and hooking up his soldiers with it and stuff like that. You know, hooking up the priest bread. You know, you don't you don't recognize me. <laughs> uh, so in this and, and this is kind of like the same thing. Uh, you know, who is that? You know, it's, and, and I, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just spitballing here because I'm like reading things, you know, and I, I'll try to crystallize this, you know, later on. You know, we'll pray about it. I'm just kind of throwing out there for us to marinate on, uh, you know, when it's talking about, uh, you know, when the word says, don't be looking out, don't be looking for him in the fields and stuff, right? Because um, he's going to come in a way, but we're talking about Jesus, though. And this, this is Rebecca who's coming. The bride is coming in this one. And hey, when we're talking about uh, don't be looking in the fields, don't be looking in for Jesus, because this is an aspect where Jesus is coming. So this is like on the opposite ends of it. Right, so I don't know. It's just, you know, 